Decepticon Steve reporting in for duty, sir. Oh, that's great, but where's the rest of the team? Eh, they don't have a Studio Series figure yet. What's going on, everybody? Republic Cinema here, and in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition War for Cybertron Decepticon Soldier. Now, this figure has been anticipated for quite some time because there was just one leak about this figure, which I believe some people mistaken it for a War for Cybertron Ironhide. But, turns out it was this guy, the Decepticon Soldier. Uh, kinda looks like the Decepticon Brute. But anyways, is Hasbro somewhat improving on one of the worst Gamer Edition figures they ever made? That being Barricade. I believe this is the same engineering as the Gamer Edition Barricade, just obviously different. A few months ago, I did take a look at the Gamer Edition Sideswipe. I haven't taken a look at the Gamer Edition Starscream yet. At the time the Gamer Edition Starscream came out, I did not take a look at him because, well, I was still determining whether or not I should get back into doing reviews of the Gamer Edition. But anyways, the Decepticon Soldier has a lot of different versions from the video game, not just the Soldier himself, but countless other variations, that being more than the protoforms from the Bayverse. However, much like this guy right here, they're all cannon fodder. And of course, figures that you can annihilate, defeat, and absolutely decimate in the video game. Still haven't tried that game, gotta try it out. But before we take a look at what could potentially be an army builder for anyone interested in army building with this figure, let's take a quick look at the packaging. Starting off of the front, you get this nice artwork of the Decepticon soldier, or the brute, and the rest is all words, names, and logos. On the top is the Transformers War for Cybertron logo, and on the bottom is all boring. On one side, you get a better look at the Decepticon soldier, and on the other side, you get a more zoomed in look to his face. And then you turn to the back and you get a little more info on what you get inside the packaging, and beneath all that info is just a whole bunch of boringness. But with that being said, let's take a look at the figure. So starting off, painting and sculpting is pretty good, pretty good. Of course, he has that gray and the green. Not too much purple, probably not enough purple, but it's okay. The sculpting, I much say, is a little better than the barricade one. I'd also say that it's pretty good in terms of accuracy. Not the best, but still pretty great. And that head sculpt looks really nice. You can also tell that the visor is painted orange rather than something along the lights of red or even purple. You might have also noticed that the hand is pretty much the same hand as barricades as well, only you could move it around a little better than barricades, because there is not as much kibble. Speaking of kibble, there is, um, quite a lot, and it kind of got bigger, especially for the backpack. It would have been nice if there was a way where you could just close these in, but the legs on the other hand are on a whole new level of kibble. It's Kind of worse than the barricade. But hey, what's not worse than barricade is that this guy can actually stand. Because his feet, though only going up and down on the front of the feet, have been designed to make sure that this guy stands in place. Oh, and I believe these big wheels are totally accurate. It's just the backpack and the leg kibble that just takes it too far. Coming to think of it, I don't think this guy's supposed to have a backpack. Especially when you look at the artwork on the box, although I'm not sure if the artwork is accurate should be. And for quality on mine is not too tight, not too loose. It's all right. But what I will admit is that when moving this guy up and down, sometimes you move his arm around too much and it does happen to find itself like this. But I suppose it's not that big of a deal. I'm actually quite impressed with the quality as it is not tight to the point where you can barely move this guy's head. Like seriously, at least you can move it up and down. Moving it from left to right is a little bit of a struggle, but not as bad as the barricade one. For barricade Barricade, at least his head can move up and down a little bit, but to move his head, what? Yeah, Barricade sucks. I believe that's because Barricade and Bumblebee weren't meant to be in the Gamer Edition. I believe it was just supposed to be the Gamer Edition Optimus Prime, but Hasbro wanted the designers to make these two as quick as possible. And they wanted them in that wave, ASAP. So this is what they came up with, and... It doesn't look all that great. I hope for them to redo these figures in the future. But anyways, one year later, I guess they are improving slightly. So quality on this guy, not too bad. And now let's talk about his accessories. 
So he actually only comes with one gun, that being a gray version of Barricade's blaster. Now it does seem as if it's supposed to hold on the hand, but no, that's not the case. That's because what you have to do is remove the arm and swap it out for the gun. And to be honest, that method of having the figure armed is not all that bad. Oh, and in case you're trying to look for somewhere to store the arm, all you gotta do is just plug it right there. It doesn't hold that great, but it stays there. But anyways, here's Decepticon Steve. Uh, some people like to call the cannon fodder Decepticon with his arm cannon. Now, it may look as if this guy's blast effect compatible, but that is not the case. To make this blaster cannon blast effect compatible, you will have to force your blast effect all the way in, and it should stay. Now, despite that being a bit of a stretch on that port right there for the blast effect, at least it stays in. I guess that's another reason why they make these rubbery. Or what? Whatever you call that type of plastic, I know there's a name for it, I just can't think of it right now. Of course, there is weapon storage for the back, and if you want, you can put other arm cannons from other Game Edition figures onto the Decepticon Soldier, as long as it's not Optimus's arm cannon, because that one, I don't think you could plug onto this guy's arm. And since this figure is better at crossing his arms than Barricade, he can hold blaster rifles just fine. Now, since the Decepticon Soldier figure that you see right here is taking more of the design from the Brute, I feel he should come with an axe as the brutes were equipped with the axe in the video game i believe i only saw a picture of that once and then that was pretty much it let me know in the comments anyways moving on to articulation ball joint at the head which allows an up and a down and a swivel there is also an extra hinge joint in order for the head to move forward somewhat a full rotation on the arm bend at the shoulder bicep swivel bend at the elbow since the wrist is on a ball joint the wrist can go on a swivel a side to side and an up and a down waist swivel legs can spread leg can move forward can move backwards thigh swivel bend at the knee and lastly this is primarily used for transformation but the foot can move up and down and that's pretty much it for articulation now moving on to size comparison starting off here he is next to barricade bumblebee sideswipe cliff jumper megatron optimus prime reactivate Soundwave, and lastly here he is next to the reactivate optimus prime and then here he is next to the other gamer edition decepticons of course i'm missing starscream because i don't have him or do I? Aside from Starscream, we are missing a lot, and I mean a lot of Decepticons, from the Transformers War for Cybertron video game. That's not even including the ones from Fall of Cybertron. But I don't think we've gotten to the Fall of Cybertron. We kind of have with Cliffjumper. But officially, there hasn't been anything for Fall of Cybertron in terms of Gamer Edition just yet. But in terms of Decepticons, we of course are missing Skywarp, Thundercracker, Brawl, in which Skywarp and Thundercracker will be getting their own Studio Series figure just next year, not this year. We're also missing some main Decepticons, that being Shockwave and Soundwave, and maybe Slipstream, I believe, is also one of them. Oh, and the different types of Decepticon soldiers, like just the normal soldier, the brute, the leader. Yeah, a Decepticon leader does exist. If that were to be made in the Studio Series, well... Yeah, leader class. There's also other types of variants within the Decepticon soldier scale, and there's also plenty of heavy and artillery types of infantry. <clears throat> Did I forget to mention there were some aerial bots and sniper variants too? So yeah, we're kind of missing quite a lot. But again, these are the early stages of the Gamer Edition. They are slowly but surely branching out into other different video games, that being Transformers Devastation, which honestly I think should have been one of the Michael Bay tie-in video games, but okay. And I think it's time we move on to Transformation, which is pretty straightforward in a way. That's if you start out with the limbs. So starting off with the arms, make sure you open this up, rotate the wrist upwards like this, so that way it'll just close in like so, and then just close in that panel. And there you go, that's the hand folded in. I'm sure it would be simpler to just rip it out rather than having to do all of this. Anyways, straighten this out, and then do it a second time. And now working on the legs. First off, I recommend rotating it 
as that's what you will need to do. Close the foot. In case you have this big chunk positions like so, make sure you untab it and push it down right here. As after that, you will need to close it in with the other side of the chunk. Same thing for the other leg. And after that, all you gotta do is just close the two in. Make sure these top chunks are tabbed in as well. After that, you come back to the arm, push it down, make sure that's tabbed in, and then make sure that tabs in as well. Same thing for the other side. After that, untab the backpack. After that, move this big chunk out. And then close this in. After that, slowly but surely push this all the way in. Make sure it closes in right here. And here's the Decepticon soldier in his alt mode. That being this odd Cybertronian vehicle, which looks somewhat armored, I guess. Not only is it the gray that you see, but of course there is plenty of green being showed and not enough purple the transformation overall i do appreciate the, how simplistic it was certain tabs and certain slots connected better than barricades as for barricade here certain tabs and certain slots like the ones you see right here did not tab in all that great because well they bent I mean, I kind of had a similar issue with the Decepticon Soldier, but at least that bent tab right there with a stress mark allowed me to push it in onto the slot. The wheels roll fairly well, and it's never not cool to see giant wheels, as it does make this alt mode look a little more on the off-road side. I'm curious to know what the other different shapes and size of Decepticon Soldier's alt modes look like. Only time will tell on that, unless I play the game to find out myself. Now, one more thing I will touch on is that everything looks clean and sleek except for the arm sticking out right here i don't know if that was because of the design of the car or it just ends up looking weird but anyways let's talk about the weapon storage which if you want it could simply tab onto the back but one thing i never mentioned is that this tip right here is actually a tab that will peg it onto the slot on the top of the alt mode, making the alt mode less boring and a little more on the stealth mode side. This is something I forgot to mention with Barricade, by the way. So far, this is a form of weapon storage only accessible to Barricade and the Decepticon Soldier. And one more thing for the weapon storage on the alt mode, you can switch the gun to the other side as a form of rear defense. Actually, one more, one more thing is that you could actually have the gun lay flat on the side because of course there's the side tab right there and that's pretty much it for weapon storage and before you ask yes barricade can do the same thing too and for a brief comparison here he is next to the barricade in his alt mode and megatron not gonna lie these war for cybertron decepticon alt modes are pretty cool especially since all of them are different from each other can't wait for more of the other decepticons to see what they look like in their alt modes be sure to let me know in the comments which decepticon you would like to see in the future from transformers war for cybertron and after the autobot soldier comes around be sure to let me know in the comments which type of autobot soldier you would like to see be made in the gamer edition let alone any of the bayverse autobot and decepticon protoforms cannot wait for those to surface on the studio series and lastly out of the three being showcased right here which one's your favorite? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And I think that's pretty much it. I think that's all I have to say for this guy. Overall, he's an okay figure. And since he's just a normal Decepticon soldier, he'll work best, maybe even better, as an army builder. Oh, and the transformation and alt mode is A-OK. -okay. If you're looking to pick this figure up, He's available on Amazon and I believe Walmart as well, or at least that's where I got mine, but he was the only one left. Honestly, I recommend Amazon, but I'm looking forward to seeing that Autobot soldier and maybe some different variations of the Decepticon and Autobot soldier in the future. But one thing I really hope Hasbro does in the next two years is the Decepticon protoforms from the Bayverse. The protoform design is very interesting as there is plenty of variations and size variations throughout the movies. So to see at least one of the protoforms in the next two years would be a blessing. But for now, technically this guy works depending on whether or not you want to use it as a Decepticon protoform and say like a stop motion or something. That's your choice. But anyways, that's pretty much it. If you like what you saw in this video, be sure to slam that like button, share with your friends as well, turn on post notifications so that way you don't miss another upload. Let me know how I did into this video, and most importantly, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See ya!